Welcome, everybody. Welcome to our town hall on supporting first-gen students, uh, especially now. I think it's more important than ever during this COVID-19 pandemic. I am your host, Mike Ayalon, CEO of Greek University. We have two excellent panelists with us today that are here to answer all of your questions, as well as share their experiences as first-gen students. We'll start with Victor. Victor is a first-gen college grad with an interesting story full of grit, inspiration, and resilience. Victor went from an unknown first-gen student from Elizabeth, New Jersey, to double VP of programming as well as public relations for Kane University's Greek Senate. The following year, he served as president of the Greek Senate. He led the charge and was recognized as the first recipient of NGLA's innovation grant to host a week on campus designed around mental health and they called it the body, mind, and spirit. So we're certainly very glad to have Victor with us today. And uh, our second panelist is Edson O'Neill. Edson is a speaker for Greek University. He previously served as the Director of Student Activities at St. Leo University. In that role, he advised the Student Government Union Executive Board and was overseeing the Office of Student Activities that consisted of the Campus Activities Board, clubs and organizations, community engagement, as well as Greek life. Edson mm -hmm. received his Master of Science in Leadership from Nova Southeastern University in December of 2010. And of course, Edson is a proud member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, if you can't already tell with his background. So we're certainly glad to have Victor and Edson on our program. If anybody here who is on the call with us today, we're so excited to have all of these listeners live. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat box here on Zoom. I will be monitoring that. I'll throw those questions to our panelists right away if it's relevant to the discussion we're having at the moment, or the other option is we can always wait until the end to ask them. So I promise we will ask whatever questions you have for our panelists. We will make sure that all of your questions are going to be answered today. So welcome to the program, Victor and Edson. Excited to be here. How's everyone doing today, man? Uh, that, thank you for the opportunity and welcome everyone. Myself and Victor have been working really hard on this for the past, what, two weeks? I'd say about three, three, yeah. four weeks almost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Time uh, flies. <laughs> yeah, so we're definitely excited to kind of um, discuss this important topic. So thank you guys. Excellent. Well, we appreciate both of you. Let's start with Victor. Hey, Victor, tell us about your experiences in going to college at Kane University and some of the things that you needed to be successful as a first generation college student. Um, I'll begin by saying that I'm from Elizabeth, New Jersey. Um, Elizabeth is a uh, high density um, location for students. We have over eight high schools. So, um, it's not always very easy uh, preparing students to go to college. The main factor in me attending college was uh, my mentor. Um, I met him my freshman year in high school and he really, he guided me as a first gen student uh, to applying for college, uh, doing my FAFSA, um, attending the uh, onboarding orientation, um, and going for my placement test, all these things were like, what, what, what is this? You know, as a first gen student, um, that guidance was highly valuable. Um, so coming into Kane University, I absolutely loved it because Kane fosters uh, a huge campus of diversity. There's people from all walks of life, um, all ethnicities, and it really puts you in a position where you, you realize how big the world is going into college. It's a huge transition and I really appreciated uh, being able to experience that and have somebody that guided me to it. Um, I, I'm from Elizabeth, New Jersey, so Kane is literally right off the street. And I, I, I was originally planning on commuting and freshman orientation comes around and I'm at freshman orientation and the people I met there are like, yo man, I know you're from Elizabeth, but why don't you uh, dorm, you know, like the year, you're, you'd be missing out on so much. So I took a leap of faith. I came home and I'm like, mom, I want to dorm. Um, this is something that I have to do. <laughs> and 
it was like she was like, yo, you could walk to school. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, so she was like, you know what? Let's do it. So we went on FAFSA. We signed up for um the Parent Plus loan, and we made it happen. You know, um that same day, my mom had my room rented out. <laughs> it was like I wasn't even out of the door. My room was rented. I'm like, all right, you know what? This is, things got real very quick. <laughs> Um, and just that opportunity in itself really just made things very real for me in that moment, um, especially as a minority student. Um, and the support that my mom gave me was just so fundamental. Um, and for first generation students, support is just so vital. That foundation really helps you out a lot. Um, and being confident, you know, just not, not uh, withholding myself from anything really helped me out. Um, my freshman year, I ended up getting full-time employment. I worked as a car salesman. So that helped me to learn how to budget my time accordingly. But I wasn't really um, on campus as much because of that. Mm -hmm. All right, that's good. That's good. And I think the mentor piece is probably one of the most important things, I think, for first-gen students and obviously for you to get things organized. That's really good. Edson, same question to you. Tell us about your experiences in going to college and some of the things that you needed to be successful as a first-generation college student. Awesome. So I'm from St. Croix from the U.S. Virgin Islands. So is anybody from the Caribbean a you know, you definitely know the struggles. <laughs> um, you know, so the only person in my immediate family that actually went to college was my older brother. But by the time he finished college, I was in middle school and he, he got his job and he was kind of doing his thing. So I didn't really have anyone to kind of talk me through applying, getting, um, getting in, getting stuff done, what you need and everything of that nature. Uh, my parents helped me the best of their abilities from what they learned from going with my older brother, but it, it wasn't too much. Um, I did have a good guidance counselor at my school, and I really made sure we did our SATs, you know, notified us of college fairs in the area so that we can go and, and attend the college fairs and make sure that uh, we saw the different colleges and everything of that nature. Um, so speaking with them about, you know, opportunities, majors, you know, um, is the application free? That was a big thing. If, if they say, hey, if you apply today, we'll waive your application fee. That was big. Um, you know, so that was my experience applying for colleges. So as um, we're getting ready to make decisions, um, myself and three of my friends in my class decided to go to the same school. So I figured, all of us going to the same school together will be beneficial for us because being that we're all first-gen students, we'll be able to support each other and make sure we were able to attend the college together. I eventually went to St. Leo U University. And the reason why I chose it was because they gave me the best deal financially, you know, as far as financial aid and what my parents would have to contribute to pay. That was a big deal for me. And it was it was, a, it was a small campus. At the time, St. Leo was only about 1,200 students. I mean, it was a very small campus, so I would be able to really meet people and really build relationships as I did when I was back home in the islands. So that was a big piece for me. And St. Leo, the part of Florida that it was in, it wasn't too far from my brother and family that lived, that lived in Orlando, Florida. So when I had to go away or when I had on breaks, I typically go to Orlando, you know? So um, that was my experience going to college. When I got there, um, it was pretty rough because when I went to orientation, I met a lot of people and I thought that things had kind of found the place. And then when college started, it was like people pull, put the, um, their pedal on the gas and everyone just went. And I was like, and I felt I was getting left behind. Um, so what really helped me really adjust to the experience and really make an impact was one, joining my fraternity, um, two, developing great relationships with administration. Um, doing those things really helped me get accustomed 
really helped me to learn the do's and don'ts, um, what classes to take, you know, what professors to take, who not to take, um, you know, so really developing good relationships and being a part of a brotherhood and being around people who are after the same goal and to assure that I was doing what I had to do was very important. And then building relationships with um, people in administration, with your professors, that was important too because when um, I needed assistance and I was in dire help, they helped me. So that really helped me to be successful in, um, as I transitioned to college um, in regards to joining my fraternity, being a part of organizations, um, student government, and really I'm um, getting mentored by members of the administration to make sure that I was guided to where and uh, accomplish my goals. Mm -hmm. Your answer really resonates with me because it's that support structure that was so important to you. And I think that's why you and I are so passionate about Greek life, because it gives you that support structure. Um, it gives you what you need in order to be successful. And I think even on a small campus like St. Leo with 1200 students back then, you know, it's very easy, I think, to manage a chapter versus all of these students, right? So um, so I'm glad that you had that experience. I'm glad Alpha Phi Alpha was there and you had the mentor and the, the structure that you needed. Um, so uh, that's fantastic. That's really, really good. Now, Victor, uh, first gen students right now are gonna need a ton of financial support, especially since many of them support their parents. Many of them are supporting siblings and or children. So where can we send students that will need assistance for things like food and access to healthcare? What should we do? Um, so it's very good that you asked that because um, right now more than ever, um, this, this pandemic is bringing out the best and the worst um, in, in people and in our companies. And it's really showing that um, there is a lot of support out there. You just need to uh, find the resources. Um, I have, uh, in the, I have a, a list of links that, so like, for example, uh, first, risefirst.org, a first-gen specific uh, curated resource. They're giving away $200 to first-gen students uh, for simply uh, sharing a blog of their COVID-19 struggles. So you, you write a few paragraphs um, and you submit it and $200 uh, in your pocket. Um, so as well as that, there's a site called grantspace.com. Um, it's an economic resource ranging from grants for individuals, nonprofits, um, artists, dislocated bartenders, because uh, many students usually uh, look for work in restaurants since it's uh, nights and weekends um, and it's cash. I know I worked at restaurants throughout uh, my time in college and it really uh, helped to open horizons for me as far as meeting individuals and being able to manage, uh, helping out at home and managing my own budget. So um, these websites are, are basically giving away scholarships and grants for students that are dislocated because of uh, COVID-19. Another, if you haven't already applied for unemployment, um, I would definitely say apply for unemployment because um, COVID-19 has become a huge reason uh, to apply for unemployment, which if, if that's the reason why you're out of work, you're more than justified by doing so. And it's really providing for a lot of people that don't have employment right now, you know? Mm -hmm. Those are some great resources. Edson, what about you? Obviously, first-gen students are gonna need a lot of financial support right now. Where should they go for assistance with food and, and things like access to healthcare? Yeah, so <clears throat> Victor made a lot of great points and a lot of great resources. So I'll definitely make sure you guys utilize those. Um, make sure you're watching the news. Um, I know watching the news these days can be a little bit negative and kind of bring me down a little bit, but there are certain points where they might announce where certain organizations are donating food to different pantries and different areas. Just make sure you take a note of it and take a look to see where is that being done so you can be able to um, attend to get food and attend to whatever events are happening. Um, you know, if you're still near your school or on your campus, if you're a campus has a food pantry, make sure you're utilizing that and you're making sure that you're going there to um, make sure that you're fulfilling your needs. Um, if the university still is um, offering options through, through their dining hall, you know, just seeing what, um, what options they're having, 
if they're still operating, what they're providing, what they're doing. Is it going to be to go? Are they going to allow a certain amount of people at a certain time? You know, these are information that the university would be posting. So make sure you're looking at stuff like that to see, you know, uh, what are the different hours of operations of everything that's going on um, and anything in that nature. And again, to reiterate what Victor said about um, applying for unemployment, you know, definitely make sure to look at that. Um, if there's any scholarships out there, because I know universities might have some different scholarships that out there that you can potentially apply for. And maybe a scholarship can be used to kind of help provide, you know, assistance for anything that you might need, you know. So definitely utilize those resources um, in regards to if there's any need for financial assistance, um, any need for meals, you know, that would be some of the best ways that I would um, instruct um, individuals to go to. That's great advice. Going off of that, I, I posted on the chat, if you just copy and paste the link, that's a link to the Google Doc with the resources that I just mentioned. Um, so you can find everything from my scholarly to the Rise First that I mentioned and Grant Space on there and a few other resources that I didn't mention. Um, all the links are in that document and keep an up to date on uh, your own um, university's website. Universities are keeping up to date on resources that they are offering. So checking that like once a week and every now and then it'll definitely be helpful. Absolutely. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing that. We'll put those, that link in the comments on YouTube and Facebook and the other places where this video is going to go. We are going to record this and share this afterwards. Let's talk about jobs for a minute since we're talking about students and financial support. Obviously jobs right now during COVID-19 are in short supply. Um, what are we doing in terms of access to clothing for interviews and training for these interviews? What can we do to help our students get ready for these types of things? What do you guys think? So in regards to offering clothing or resources to kind of help with uh, individuals if they're still trying to apply for jobs and look for jobs or anything in that nature, a lot of career services, even though they might be working remotely, are still offering services to students. So make sure that you're working in connection with your career services department. I saw online different schools doing virtual uh, meetings, uh, virtual sessions, offering to still review resumes or anything of that nature. I also know there's, there's I know not all universities do it, but I know quite a few that has pantries for clothing. So make sure that you are kind of, um, contacting your career services department at your institution to see if they're still offering that, how can you get something, you know, what's the process of how that works or anything of that nature. Um, in regards to outside, outside of your university, Google, and you can look up um, local thrift stores or different places in the areas that might be offering discounts or might be giving promotions or might be giving things away you know, in order to help people. A lot of organizations are understand that there's a lot of people struggling for this epidemic. So a lot of organizations, a lot of people, a lot of universities have been very generous in offering support and, you know, again, giving discounts or also um, donating different things. Mm -hmm. So um, definitely make sure that you look up your university website to see any updates they have keep checking your local areas to see what some of the organizations are doing. Um, and again, really build a connection with your career services department because they definitely want to make sure that even though we're not working at the, um, at the university where we're working remotely, we're still here to provide resources for you. And we still want to make sure that we're helping you to get you to where you want to go. Um, so please uh, definitely check with the career services department see what resources they're offering um, and virtual meetings. I will definitely um, do all that. Nice. Uh, so Victor, do you have any thoughts on that, on providing jobs for first-gen students and how we can get them prepared? Well, leading off of what Edson uh, said, Edson has a lot of really great points on there. Um, so today, today's like actively during uh, COVID-19, it's a great time to work on your resume, to beef up your LinkedIn profile. It shows companies that um, if you're unemployed, you know, 
uh, being eager and being enthusiastic is something that all companies uh, look for in people because you want people that are going to be dedicated and that are looking to help themselves as much as they're looking to help others. Um, so beefing up your LinkedIn profile, uh, catching up on um, updating your resume is huge. And, and there's no better time than not to be doing these things as well as um, collecting like testimonials from friends and uh, people that you've worked with, peers that you've been in organizations with on, for example, um, going on your LinkedIn and be like, yo, messaging people like, hey, if you can endorse me for these skills, those little things really make a huge impact in the long run. You know, attention to detail is super important. Um, and if you haven't already, I would absolutely suggest uh, doing that. Um, contact me, uh, my, my, my contact information is in the link that I shared. You can contact me if you have any questions. But as well as that, um, along with uh, this town hall that we're having right now, Michael has had um, a bunch of town halls that are very helpful. So the one before uh, this one directly was particularly um, on LinkedIn and how to beef up your LinkedIn profile. This happened, um, I believe it was, it was Monday night that you had that um, at 4 p.m. I'll drop the link for that in the, oh, awesome, awesome, yeah. Um, YouTube.Greek University, the LinkedIn uh, one is right there. And then before that one, uh, if you've ever heard of andrewhudson.com, um, it's based off of Colorado. Andrew Hudson is a phenomenal um, investor in helping people get jobs. I watched the link, the town hall that you had with him. There's so many great tips and tricks on following up with employers. And following up is a huge part um, yeah. in looking for employment because it shows the company that, you, you know, you're looking for employment, that you're actively seeking it and that you're, you're hungry. And that's something that is just phenomenal uh, characteristic and in, in looking for employment. So I would definitely suggest checking out those two episodes and they have helped me out personally a bunch. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate you giving me that uh, shout out. It's uh, youtube.com slash Greek university INC. Um, and on there, the last two episodes, one was on LinkedIn and how to beef up your LinkedIn profile. That would be great for first gen students to watch another free resource. And then uh, the one that Victor was talking about is uh, Andrew Hudson's jobs list. Uh, the CEO and founder came on and he did a whole session on finding jobs during COVID-19. So great resources. Uh, Julie here in the chat, she says that she's the career and job place placement specialist at Delta. She's been doing Zoom mock interviews and recording videos for students as well. They've been calling to check in on students. They've been keeping in touch via email and phone call conversations. And uh, when they know a student needs assistance in terms of clothing, they direct them to a local store called Sassy Cats that helps even during this time. So I think that's really important for students to know that those resources are available to find the outfit that they need for these interviews and get personal sessions with these uh, job placement specialists at Delta. So I think that's really good. Um, Julie also has been sending them weekly Indeed Career Builder LinkedIn job postings, and she put together a document to help them be aware of all the jobs that are out there that are currently hiring. So I think that's really important to be able to put all of those resources together locally, as well as start talking about some of the other uh, national resources that are available. And her office also helps by sending the resume directly to the hiring managers, especially when they have a personal connection with those hiring managers. So we want to leverage all of those contacts in your network. So that was fantastic coverage on that question. No question about Great it. Great example. That's, that's, a, that's a perfect example of pretty much of what me and Virgil just stated. So to see that uh, Julie's doing that, kudos to you. And uh, um, definitely continue doing that. Uh, that, that that's a, a perfect example of staying connected with the students and making sure they continue to have the resources, reaching out, providing resources online. That's perfect. Yeah, you can see she's going the extra mile, and that's exactly what these students need. Um, that's fantastic. Hey, Edson, what is the role of our higher ed institutions for first-gen students right now? So could we be providing access to things like writing centers and tutoring se uh, centers remotely? And what about things like study skills or time management workshops? What is the role of the university right now? 
Well, the role of a university right now, even though we are forced to be remote, remote um, shouldn't change. Um, so our job in higher education is to support the student body and definitely first generation students. So I know I'm talking to a lot of individuals from a previous institution at other institutions, there's been this big talk of really moving forward to virtual and doing meetings, trainings virtually. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that COVID has kind of sped that process up for all of us, you know, because um, being that we have to work remote now, we have to figure out ways of definitely um, being unique, being creative, and being different. You know, so um, Julie's a prime example of staying connected and providing resources. So what she's doing as a, as a member of her institution is what other members of different institutions should be doing. Mm -hmm. So calling students, scheduling meetings with students, making sure that they're staying connected, um, I know certain schools are still doing things to interact with students, so they're doing like little like um, games or bingos or different things to, to, to keep them engaged and to do something fun to get their minds off of everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when it comes to um, trainings or if it comes to resources on writing or studying or developing skills of time management, you know, offering virtual um, training sessions, virtual tutorings, virtual um, everything through Zoom or Microsoft Teams. There's a ton of resources that universities can utilize in order to keep the students engaged. Um, is It's important that whenever, whenever a university has an update, they post it so that uh, individuals are aware and students are, are aware of what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you notice that you've had a relationship with a student and you haven't heard from them for a while, or you might think that they might not, might not be doing well, or, you know, if you're connected with the professor and you're saying, hey, they, they haven't been logging into the virtual classes or submitting work on time, then it's our duty to follow up and make sure that these students are doing okay and that these students are still having resources that they need. It. We need to make sure that even though we're remote, that we're still supporting them that we're still there for them. You know, this is a trying time right now and we need each other more than ever. So it's very important that the university stays connected with the students and making sure that they are still have the resources in order to complete their goals. So moving to virtual and calling and emailing, like. You know, th there's so many different resources we have now to utilize to make sure that we're still connected. So whatever resources that the universities can utilize to make sure that they're staying connected with the students, uh, whether it's Zoom, Microsoft Teams, um, just through emails, or I know a lot of you know cer certain areas have spreadsheets of students with their numbers and contact info, and you know just. Um, Give them a call, you know, reach out. Hey, um, so-and-so, I haven't heard from you from a while. I haven't spoken to you. I just want to check in and see how you're doing and making sure that you're following through. Um, you know, we, have you been able to log in online to your classes? Have you been able to stay in touch with your professors? Like, what are things that you might need in order to uh, make sure to stay connected with, with the student body? Mm -hmm. You know, so, uh, that's definitely important in regards to the university to continue to show that we're still supporting them and that we're there for them because um, we need each other more than ever. And I definitely think the university should be utilizing a lot of the student leaders a lot more mm -hmm. um, in regards to connecting to the student body. Um, you know, and I think Victor has some great information in regards to how to connect with the um, students to keep them engaged. Um, you know, to make sure that they're still building those relationships. Mm -hmm. So Jamie has a follow-up question, and I think it's a really good one. Uh, basically, what's being said here is that their university has closed uh, for the spring semester. The last day of the semester was last Friday. So how can you help students to take up on the resources that are available when we go back in the fall? 
because what's happening is they're providing resources consistently to the students, but often they don't take up on the resources until it's too late. Is there a time that is best to introduce these resources to the students? And is information on resources better received from other peers, meaning other students, or right. is it better coming from faculty, staff, and administrators? What do you think about that, Edson? Great question. Um, yes, yeah. so um, it's hard to dictate, you know, with different times and, you know, is there ever a right time? It's, it's definitely hard to say if there's definitely a right time. And yes, uh, when it comes to providing information, everything of that nature, um, sometimes it is uh, hard for to, you know, your that all students don't get it. But um, I definitely think in regards to keeping them engaged and, you know, making sure that they definitely have the resources um, in regards to that, that, you know, you just have to continue um, sending them out the information and, you know, um, and uh, making sure you're posting things on social media, you're posting things on Facebook, on Instagram, um, you know, emailing them. And, and I think if you feel, if you're, if you're doing everything through social media and you're doing everything through um, emails and you feel like you're not getting to the students, mm -hmm. the best way to get in touch with them is probably get, get them a phone call. Yeah. I'm saying, hey, you know, um, hey, so-and-so, we just wanted to reach out to make sure that you're receiving all your documentation, they're receiving all the resources that we are um, sending you. We want to make sure you have them and that you're prepared, you know, so that when the fall time comes, you um, have everything you need and that you're able to put and you're able to move forward when it comes to being things in the fall. Mm -hmm. um, that would be... A phone call is probably the best thing to do in regards to making sure that they are moving forward with that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so just staying engaged. Like I know something that might be tough because you know it's uh, you know, because you know they finish the spring semester so now then summer mode, so they're trying to really think about everything. But just really staying engaged and making sure that they are aware of everything. Um, and as far as timing goes, so. I would say right after semester ends, making sure that you're sending everything to them and, and maybe a couple of weeks later, maybe a month, um, send follow-ups just to make sure they're getting everything and they have everything. And then, you know, maybe a couple weeks after that, maybe send another follow-up. And then I think in that third or fourth follow-up, that would be probably the phone calls that I will be making in order to reach the different students and everything in that nature. Um, I know when I worked at St. Louis University, um, you know, our success coaches had a list of students and they had to call every single student to make sure that the students had everything that they needed to be prepared and that they had everything completed so that when they came in the fall semester getting ready for the, um, their schooling, that they can just come in, have everything completed, already done, and can just kind of come in smoothly. So uh, that would be my advice. I might suggest it in regards to students <coughs> engaged and making sure that students are aware of what they have to do and that it's getting completed so that it's um, getting done. And setting up appointments, saying, hey, you know, let's set up an appointment so we can go over everything with you. So I think if you're telling them that you're gonna work with them on making sure stuff is getting done, I think they'd be more enticed to do it because they know that you're gonna be there with them. Do you think if first-gen students hear about these resources from another student, is that better so than coming from you? I, I do I do believe um, that going off to that point, um, so students are more receptive to uh, listening to their peers, I would say, or somebody that they could relate to more easily, somebody that's closer to their age. Um, it's something that I've noticed, uh, for example, um, I just wanna give a quick shout out to Alex Lewis. Uh, he's the uh, uh, director for Greek life at King University. And some of the opportunities that he presented to me really showed me that um, students, are more receptive to listening to somebody that they look up to um, that's closer to their age group because they it resonates within them because they look up to this person and like, hey, if this individual um, is doing something, what's to stop me from doing it? Um, and they're so close in age. So for example, we would attend the, um, the East Orange Elementary School and we would speak to the elementary students over there and they were very receptive and very interactive and engaged when we would go and speak to them. 
Um, leading off to that, when, when you hear something from a peer, somebody that works close to you, you're more receptive to tune into it because it's, it's closer and you can relate to it a lot better than you would from an example, an administrator or, um, or like what did you, um, faculty or staff. So to your point, Jamie, um, I definitely think it's, uh, it would be very helpful to uh, hear it from, from peer and staff and if it's backed up by administrators, it just gives that backbone and that support that this is something that is fruitful, it's gonna be beneficial, and it's an opportunity that should be followed up on. Um, th that's a very good question, um, by the way, and I hope uh, our answer does help because Edson did have a great point uh, saying that um, following up is very important as well because we're all so caught up in what's going on and we don't really take a chance to um, to, to keep up with everything else. So following up and hearing it from different sources is very important. Yeah, especially the students. Definitely utilize your student leaders, um, you know, in regards to following up in re um, as well. So that, that's another resource to use, um, you know, when it comes to follow up and engaging because the student leaders are the voice for the students. So if you feel that they're not listening to the faculty or staff, using the student's voice can be very helpful. And uh, Victor's a good example, you know, um, in, in regards to that. Hey, Victor, I have another question for you. Um, something that Edson said earlier kind of resonated. Um, he mentioned that it was helpful for him to go to St. Leo because he had other students that he already knew from high school that were also going to St. Leo as well. So it was a group essentially, right? So Victor, would organizing students into groups be helpful to allow for first-gen students to connect with others online? I'm so happy that you mentioned that, Michael. Um, I actually made a note um, to bring up that same point, um, which was very helpful because a lot of times uh, we have difficulty holding ourselves accountable. Um, having, having an accountability buddy, which I feel like what, what Edson, that's where Edson was going with that, that's just so fundamental because if you're hearing it from somebody that's like your parent or an administrator, they're like, oh, blah, blah, blah. Like you're always going on about <laughs> what I should be doing. But when you hear these things from a buddy, it's like, yo, I care about you. You know, I'm calling because I care. For example, on uh, Five on the Fifth, which was an event that we did um, yesterday, it, 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 it resonates. It, it resonates hearing these things from uh, peers. Um, but I definitely, definitely believe um, that organizing students into groups is just so fundamental um, because, all right, so I'll give this example. Like I mentioned earlier, attending King University was very, um, very helpful to me because of the diversity that the community fosters. So with diversity comes different perspectives. And when, when you have different perspectives, it allows you to analyze like, all right, this is how this is how your culture has taken um, up uh, dealing with COVID-19. I like those little points that you're making. Maybe I should integrate that into my day-to-day -day and that would be helpful. And when you hear these things from people that are in your peers that are from different cultures and ethnicities and religions, it helps you to piece together the thoughts and it helps you to critically think for yourself to determine what's the best course of action. So um, higher ed institutions, grouping students together to give them that opportunity to conversate with each other is is huge um and then again i do want to give um i have a few of my peers from king university here um so every year we host the king dance marathon and unfortunately because of covid19 this year it has to be virtual but i, I logged in to the live for king dance marathon and it was completely awesome just seeing everyone's interaction and how it really felt like I was at the King Gym and there was music bumping, the DJ was on and everyone was just interacting back and forth. Um, a few different people hopped on live and I, I, it truly made you feel like maybe everything's gonna be okay throughout all the chaos, being able to see that you can, ma you can manage things even um, through the, these uncertain times, you know? I love it. So Edson, um... I think the key to all of this for first gen students to be successful, I think that we at higher ed institutions really need to do a good job of engaging parents 
Um, and that's something that I think we need to talk about a little bit. So Edson, what are some ways that we can encourage students to engage their parents? I'm thinking about maybe a biography activity, for example, might be something that we might want to do now. How can we engage parents in this process? Great question, Mike. Yeah, um, definitely engaging the parents and keeping them engaged and in the know is very important. And making sure the students are updating um, the parents and everything is very important as well. As higher institutions, it's important to keep students, parents engaged throughout the entire time. And again, um, I think that with the situation that we're in, I think it's very important that higher institutions promote to the students that, you know, staying in touch with their parents and communicating with their parents is important and needed more than ever. Um, this COVID situation is very, uh, it, it came unexpected and unfortunately people are dying from this. So we want to definitely promote to the students as their homes with their families to really take this time to reflect and to really uh, connect with their friends, especially if they don't have a relationship with their parents to build those relationships in order so that they're able to come together and be more vulnerable and be able to share experiences and share stories so that they can all be one together in doing this and anything of that nature. Ways higher institutions can work with students and connecting them with their parents. I know most colleges have parent and family associations. So just making sure that that office is setting updates and connecting with families and connecting um, updating students. You know, maybe they can offer um, a town hall student to this and invite the students with their parents to attend the virtual town hall to just kind of give updates and to open the floor for questions of what they can do to keep them engaged or what are some questions that they may have or what are things that they're doing to make sure their students are still getting the resource and the education that they're paying for um, and everything of that nature. So that would be some of the best ways to um, keep students engaging with their parents, mm -hmm. just reminding them of the importance of being with their parents at this point in time, because where this COVID stuff is insane. Like, I, I don't think anyone saw this coming. Like, I really feel like we're in a movie. Mm -hmm. Like we watch some movies all the time and to actually see this happening has been, you know, it's been eye opening, you know, so universities need to make sure they offer resources for students and parents so that they, all parties can attend in order to give updates, in order to give more information, um, in order to uh, make sure to get the parents solace of the university is not only there for their kid, but it's also there for them as well. Um, and, you know, sending updates, um, e email updates to the parents. I know some schools may have parents' newsletters. So making sure that that's still going out and like, hey, information um, in, uh, about updates and what's going on. And also this is a good attempt to utilize the parents to make sure that they're making sure that their, their students are still completing their tasks. They're getting stuff done. Hey, parent, um, hey, just a reminder, uh, FAFSA, or just a reminder, um, virtual career panel, or virtual this, you know, make sure that you're, um, that you tell your students to sign up for different things. So this can also be a good way to kind of connect the parents in and making sure the parents are staying connected with the students and they're, they're completing things that they have to do as well. So that, so using that to connect students to the parents and connect the parents to the students, I think is a good way to build those relationships and to also show that the university is behind the families 100%. Yeah, I think this is the key. The parents are the key right now more than ever because if I'm a parent, I need to know that my son or daughter is gonna be safe when they show up on campus at right. whatever, name your university, right? So I think that's really, really important now, maybe more than ever. Victor, do you have any ideas on ways that we can encourage the students to engage their parents or maybe that the university can engage the parents? Well, what I've been doing is um, I try to set up at least once a week, uh, let's say around eight, nine o'clock, to sit down with my parents um, and my, my younger brother, to sit down with the family um, and learn about each other. Because you, you assume that because you're family and you see each other all the time, 
that you know these people best. But we're often wrong, and this is a big misconception that um, causes a disconnect between parents and, and their children. So what I've been doing is I've been sitting down uh, with my mom and uh, her husband and my younger brother, and I've been asking them, like, yo, give me five things that um, you feel like I could improve on for, for my sake and for our relationship. Um, and just hearing that feedback from them is very fundamental on um, just uh, – breaking barriers and being vulnerable with each other, I feel like it's just invaluable. Um, when it comes to that relationship, we often assume that uh, these relationships are always gonna be there, but the relationships that matter the most are the hardest to maintain. And it's because they need maintenance, they need constant maintenance. So sitting down and giving your, yourself the chance to uh, be vulnerable and to hear things uh, from these people that matter so much to you is just, it's phenomenal. I really, I just took notes on like, I, I didn't, I didn't say a word. I just sat down and I wrote down like, all right, you want me to be more attentive? Um, you want me to listen more? You want me to uh, come out? You want me to do the dishes more often um, to take initiative on cleaning the house? And I'm like, all right, these are the things t that matter to my mom, you know, and being able to understand, um, each other's love language is so important. Um, and we often disregard the, the things that matter the most to the people that we love because we assume that they're always gonna be there. So um, one thing that, as a first generation student, it's, it's quite phenomenal um, being given the opportunity to educate my mom on things. And this is something that comes with first generation students because your parents didn't have that higher education. Since, since I'm in college, I, I love how my mom is very open to learning from me. And it really just makes my day, it makes my week, and it makes me feel fulfilled that I can, that I can open doors for her and I can um, bring awareness to her on certain things. So having like you as a first generation student sitting down with your parent and setting up activities to teach them things, be like, hey, um, did you know what the five love languages are? And they're like, no, what is that? And then you're like, boom, like, did you know, you, you can either appreciate affirmations, acts of service, um, spending quality time together. And they're like, whoa, that makes complete sense. And then you start to develop that relationship with your parents. It's just hugely fundamental. And then um, we like to play games. So like, we'll sit down, we're from Dominican descent. We'll play dominoes and we'll just like get into it and start chatting it up. Um, if not dominoes, we'll play cards and having these activities really just bridges gaps that makes you feel like, all right, not everything is bad during COVID-19. It gives you that opportunity. Mm -hmm. I love it. We can sense your passion, Victor. So I'm really <laughs> glad that you're a part of our discussion today. It really comes, it jumps off the screen. So we appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you. Hey, Edson, um, let's talk about some resources here. Um, how can we better alert first-gen students to activities or groups they should be taking advantage of maybe this summer or heading into the fall? Are there specific resources that you use that were helpful? So um, ideas and things that, that can be helpful is, you know, we talk a lot about staying engaged with the students, using student leaders, you know, making sure that, you know, you're, you're keeping up to date with, you know, returning and potentially new incoming students. So, you know, to keep them engaged and to kind of find out what some of the interest is, maybe sometime during the course of the summer, you know, sending them a supplemental question, just saying, hey, we want to know what are your likes? We want to know what you want to get into. Hey, we want to know what are some of your interests, you know, and then uh, once you receive that information, you know, kind of send in some of that information back to the students and saying, hey, from your, from your questionnaire, we saw that, you know, you're interested in this. So here's a link or here's resources or here is the page to this organization or here's our contact info for our activities office or, you know, you wanted to do this or our first year experience office or, you know, so definitely seeking what are some of the interests of the students? And then send them back to them, the resources of where they can go to find them. And then also send those resources and some of that feedback to some of the respective departments. So they can follow up with the students and say, you know, we heard that you're interested in this type of organization. You might be interested in joining this. Um, you know, 
uh, when you come into the fall, you know, we're going to have this event happening on this date. We like people at 10. You know, so it starts building out those conversations and those engagements. Or, you know, if you know, you're, um, we talk about, you know, if you're not hearing from the students because, you know, you know, they're having a hard time responding to the faculty and staff, this is a good time to use your student leaders who are involved in some of those organizations or who plan some of those events, you know, and then you could, you know, have those students reach out to them and say, hey, I'm involved in so-and-so organization. I want to introduce myself, you know, um, just so we can start the connections and that we can make sure we're supporting you in every way that we can. You know, so I think in, you know, building those connections early or continuing to go out of your way to build those connections. And I think when they see that you're seeking out some of their interests and what they're trying to do, they're gonna think like, wow, they actually care what I'm into or what I like or what are some of my hobbies and stuff that I want to do. All right, let me fill this questionnaire. And you know, if you're not get, if you're not getting a response the first time, again, as myself and Victor and you talked about the importance of following up, the importance of making sure that you're that you are are engaging with them. So I think the best thing and a resource as, as a way to kind of alert first generation students more about activities, organizations, resources, I think is getting a better understanding of what they need and what they want to do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and you, you know, when you're doing your orientation, whether, you know, whether you're going to try and do it on campus or if you're going to try and do a virtual orientation, also making sure that you are um, showcasing those resources and making sure that they are aware of what's available to them in regards to that. So with the university, working together as a whole is key, you know, and making sure that all departments um, are all bought in and are all in. So to tutoring, to activities, to diversity, to um, the alumni office to kind of educate them on, you know, what it means to be an alumni you know, academics, you know, making sure that you have the deans or certain professors in regards to certain um, programs out there to kind of talk about different programs. Um, especially if students are coming in undecided, you know, this is a good way to kind of showcase the programs, what they offer, you know, having your career area to, to kind of talk about what are some of the resources we have to provide for you to provide, to get internships, to get jobs, you know, everything uh, of that, you know. So, work their cut collectively as a whole to making sure that they're having all the research and information that they need. At the same time, you don't want to overload them, but you know, I think as time goes, making sure that you are providing those resources for them um, in regards to what they need. Um, just to wrap up with this question, I know I've kind of gone on, but you know, I'm a previous institution. I know when our missions would have overnights or they'd have open houses, they will reach out to all different departments across campuses so that they're tabling and so that they're in the area so that you know all these incoming students or the current students are able to see what's available and what are some of the things that they'll be able to use as they're coming in and then continue to do involvement fairs and resource fairs and connecting with different off-campus partners to kind of reach out to them and you know and also maybe seeing hey what are some things that we may not offer that you may want to start mm -hmm. you know i think giving them the, the, the opportunity to start something, I think is key. You know, um, I know Victor was able to start a lot of things on his campus. So I think Victor can talk a lot more about, you know, how he went about that. But I think given the opportunity to say, hey, we might not have it, but you know, this is something that you could potentially start. So let's meet together, let's get together, and let's see what are ways that we can get together to push this forward. And, you know, so I think empowering students to give them the knowledge and the power that they can do that, I think is key. That's really good. I think we covered that question really well. Let's, Victor, let's move on to another question. To me, isn't this a great opportunity for first-gen students to educate others on campus about their culture or other things they are proud of? I'm thinking in my mind about a guest presentation on Zoom to gain understanding on cultures that we might not know anything about. What do you think about that opportunity? Um, this is a great opportunity to do that, actually. Um, so something that I know that, uh, um, that we did at Kane was we would have a culture fest. And, and it was a phenomenal event that we would do every year. Um, 
all different cultures, all different ethnicities and religions. We would gather at Downs Hall and it would all be represented. We would have flags from everywhere. Um, there would be showcases that would happen. People would come in, display their dances, their food, um, their music. And it was a phenomenal opportunity. So bringing that onto a virtual um, landscape would be phenomenal. Um, so there's definitely a great opportunity to do that. Doing this through Zoom would be very interesting since you'd be able to share um, on a first, first perspective from their home on like, this is what it looks like from our home. This is the kind of um, pictures that we hang up. This is the plants that we keep. This, this is the mem memorabilia or um, the souvenirs that we bring back from our country. That would be a very interesting perspective to bring on. Um, I did want to touch on the last question very quickly. Um, Edson mentioned something about initiative and taking initiative is very important. So I took the initiative to go on Facebook and join some groups. And many times we don't think about um, taking advantage of these resources. So going on Facebook and joining like first gen groups, uh, groups of your culture or of even different cultures or different cities and towns gives you a perspective as to how different people are dealing with these things. So um, I feel like that's a very, very great um, opportunity. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's great. I'm happy you had a chance to join those groups recently. I know you were really pumped up about that because it really puts you in touch. And, and so that way you kind of have your finger on the pulse of what's happening there. Um, hey, great. Edson, what about uh, this next uh, thought? And I've been thinking this for a while. I think Greek life uh, and members of our fraternities and sororities, we're really good at building relationships, okay? I think we do that really? best within Greek life. So my question to you, Edson, is there a way we can leverage the relationship building skills within Greek life to ensure that universities retain our existing students and engage first generation students on campus? It seems like we have a really good match here. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, I think members of the Greek community, Greek community should be taking the time now to really leverage and build those relationships, you know. So, you know, this is a time where, you know, they can, you know, work closely with their national headquarters. This can be a time to where they are doing stuff virtually. This is a time to where you know, they can definitely learn different tricks of the trade, you know, so that, you know, def so when in the hopes that universities will be moving back to operations, that they have the skills, resources to communicate what they've learned, how they've overcome things, and how they can help support the student body. And, you know, so I think with Greek organizations leveraging relationships with each other, um, and making sure that they're staying connected and making sure that Greek advisors or, or you know, different administrators who works with the Greek community, you know, different advisors are staying connected with them as well. And making sure that um, they're, they're learning different things. So running a meeting using, um, you know, the, the, using the way to run a meeting is different virtually, mm -hmm. you know, so the, the the text left my head, so I forgot the, the, the term for it. Um, oh, Rob, Robert's Rules of Order. There you go. Learning how to do Robert's Rules of Order virtually is different from when you're in person. Mm -hmm. You know, so this is so this is like a great time to learn the skills of how to run a meeting through using Robert's Rules of Order virtually. Uh, this is a great time to kind of learn who's good at what, you know, and who has different skills and doing different um, um, stuff. Yeah. So if you have members, members of your Greek organization that are good at doing stuff virtually, that kind of understand Zoom, can kind of take things on, have them overseeing that. If you have people who are attention to detail and can learn different things like that way, have them do that. You know, to what Victor said about a lot of the things that he was doing with his family. Those are things you guys can do as a Greek organization. Doing love language, doing true colors, you know, doing different activities to learn more about each other because I think myself and Victor know and you, Mike, as a member of a great organization, you know, at college, we were very busy, you know, so whenever we wanted to do kind of time to kind of learn more about each other, it kind of got pushed to the wayside because there's a lot of things that we had to take on. Now we have the time. So let's take the time to really 
learn more about each other's skills and, and you know, and each other's traits and use those to our advantage um, in staying engaging. And, you know, to Victor's point about, you know, using the student leaders as far as engaging the students um, outside, this is a great, this, this is a great way for them to stay engaged with students who are not in the group community as well and to really showcase, here are things we've been learning, here are things that we're doing, here are some of the good things that, you know, that we're still continuing to do. So I think in showcasing that they're still operating at a time where it's hard for them to operate, I think will give students a good perspective of, you know, how appreciative we are to be part of a great organization, how hardworking that we really are. All the stuff you see on social media and on movies is not true, mm -hmm. you know. So I think really uh, utilizing your resources and skills during this time is very important. And I think in utilizing those skills, I think students will be able to really showcase it to the bigger part, the, the bigger population as, you know, ho hopefully, you know, hopefully um, schools go into operation in full force when the fall comes or, you know, or if they're still virtually or there's different things they have to go by learning how to adapt to those and working with students to adapt to those situations as well. Yeah, I love that answer. I hope every uh, higher ed institution is leveraging the power within Greek life. I think they make the perfect match for orientation, for pre-admissions, yes. for move-in, for peer-to-peer -peer mentors. Right. I mean, they are designed for this. And ultimately, they want to meet some of the new people that are coming to campus, as well as retain some of the existing students that are coming back. So uh, I think it's a great match there, but uh, this is all really good. Here's my final question, and I, I'd like to ask both of you because I think it's important. Um, Victor, how can we better encourage first-gen students and let them know that they have what it takes to be successful at our institution? What do you think, Victor? Well, I am a big believer in faith. I, I'm a very faithful human being because um, no matter how many times I've been let down in the past, I thoroughly believe that humans have uh, the innate nature to thrive and to want to be better. And this resonates in me a lot as a first gen student because um, I just feel like first gen students have so much more on their plate than, than many others. Um, and this, this has been studied. So it gives them um, something to fight for. It's like, you, you go a lot harder when you have something to prove. And many times our uh, first gen students do have something to prove because their family hasn't been in this position before. So they're fighting to build the path and, and they're leaders of, of their families and their generations um, because they're really going out into uncharted territory. So I thoroughly believe in first generation students and that they, they have what it takes to overcome any objection that is thrown their way to overcome any walls that have been put up and to just break generational barriers that have been put up. Um, I, I thoroughly, thoroughly believe that first generation students um, have what it takes. And I, 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 if you're a first generation student out there, I just want you to know that I believe in you um, and I'm here as a resource, as a help. Um, and as a first generation student myself, coming from uh, Elizabeth, New Jersey and the Bronx, New York, I know what it's like growing up in, in an impoverished section where not many believe in you and where you feel like you're set up to fail, you know? So um, I thoroughly believe that, that first generation students have what it takes. So I encourage them to find a home away from home. And this is what Greek life provided for me because I, I was able to find a place where I feel I am embraced and I was celebrated and like I had something to look forward to. I would actually spend more time on campus than I would at home. And my mom would be like, hey, when are you coming home to show us some love? Like they got to share. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Hey, Edson, what do you think about that? How can we better encourage first gen students, let them know that they have what it takes to be successful at our institution? Well, first of all, I want to tell, I want to tell all my first generation students like you have myself and Victor who are both first generation, and we were able to make it. So if we can make it, then you all can make it. You know, as first generation students, 
I think we need to look at everything that we've gone through and everything that we've been able to overcome, all the adversity and all that we've been able to achieve and use that to push us to get a college, a college education. Mm -hmm. And then if you want a further education to a master's, to a doctorate, hey, do it. Anything you put your mind to, you can do it. We are our worst critics and we are our own worst enemy. So the only thing stopping you from achieving your goals is yourself. So you have to believe in yourself. But I also think it's important that you have a great support system to be there for you. I tell everyone to this day that if I, I would not be the man I am today if it wasn't for Alpha. Joining Alpha was an amazing opportunity for me and a great risk that I took. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. All I saw was the stuff that I saw on TVs. But when I came to college and I saw what they were about, I said, this, is, this would be a good opportunity. And I'm glad I took advantage of it. And because of Alpha, not only of the brotherhoods that I built, the relationships that I built with people outside of my organization, with other members of Divine Nine, other members in IFC, other members in Panhellenic, other members in MGC, and even individuals who are not, who are not members of the Greek community. Um, I would implore everyone to find someone to really push you and keep you going. So find a mentor, you know, find someone that you can always go to or find someone that'll always um, give you good advice and be there to support you. I'd also have, I would have uh, um, more than one mentor. And so one mentor can kind of be there to support you when you're down. Have that mentor that's going to tell you how it is and kind of give it a tough love because, because we need that. You know, we need this individual that's going to tell us how it is, that are going to be blunt and just kind of be like, look, this is what it is. Look, you have to uh, move forward from this uh, make sure, and so on. So I think if you have a different set of mentors and they offer you a different set of advice in regards to pushing forward and to, um, to keep you motivated and engaged, I think it's important because I have those. I have, a, I, have, I have a mentor that I can probably go and I can cry, I can share emotion, I can be a little bit more vulnerable, but then I have mentors that like, hey Edson, like, this is what you need to do, this is what it is, mm -hmm. um, you know, and different friends. So having different views across the spectrum helps me with different perspectives and helps me with different guidance in kind of how to do things. I'm getting that love and support and I'm still getting love and support from those that are being blunt, but they're giving me more in a tough love. Mm -hmm. You know, so having a little bit of okay. all that across the board, I think is very important. Um, you know, so having that support system, us having that faith as Victor said, and that belief that you can do it, you are your worst enemies. So the only person that can stop you from really getting to where you want to go is yourself. So it's very important that you have that faith, you have that belief, and you have the support system around you to kind of continue to push you forward into what you want to achieve. Yeah. Um, everyone who you talk to always says, I'm here where I am because of so-and-so person, because of my dad, uh, my mom, um, my coach, you know, um, this, this teacher, you know, this professor, like we always have these individuals that have impacted our lives and they help us to kind of push us to the next level. So when you have those, hold on to it and, you know, make sure that you continue to use the resources um, to your advantage. Um, I still use it to this day. Um, and I'm very proud to say that I've been able to serve those for other people, which is great, you know, so being able to get that and then to pay forward to those to help those who are in need has been very beneficial to me because I consider myself to be a, a servant leader. So I want to make sure that I'm here to serve. Um, so definitely like you guys are the future. You guys can get to where you want to go. It's up to you though. Map out your dreams, make your goals, you know, set a time frame by this time. Hey, you know, um, by this time I want to achieve this. And something I learned is having an accountability partner. So this person will hold you accountable. So share your goals, share your information with that person. So that person can see where you are. Hey, you said you want to do this by this time and you haven't done it.
what's going on. Mm-hmm. You're right, my bad. I fell off. Let me get back to um, on my path on, on getting to where I want to go right now. So that's very important. That's excellent. That's really, really Lead, good. And uh, Jamie was, that point. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say that Jamie was sharing kind of how she was bridging the gap between uh, advisors and professors to the students and basically making themselves more human by sharing with the students that they are also a first generation graduate and uh, sharing this statement, this is what Jamie shares, you are capable through hard work and wise choices. And then in signing off emails, it's you've got this. And I think that is uh, really, really important in terms of encouraging first gen students that they have what it takes to be successful here. And I think that's so important, right, Victor? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Um, that was, you, this was a phenomenal uh, town hall. I just had some things I wanted to leave the students off with y'all. Edson, you, you took a lot of the points right out of my notebook. <laughs> but just to reiterate, <laughs> um, be, be mindful of the company we keep is, is hugely fundamental. Um, find highly motivated students. Finding highly motivated students to partner up with um, because the company you keep is a reflection of yourself. So seeking groups and study partners who genuinely care is very important. Um, as, as you said, accountability buddies is another word for this, but uh, making sure that they're highly motivated individuals that will not be afraid to let you know, like, hey, this is what you need to be doing. Um, one of the biggest mistakes that college students make is that they do not know how to study properly. They go to the library in groups that are either on their phone or chatting. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people that are watching this can relate that um, if you're going to the library, uh, being in a group that is, that is just chatting and, and keeping up will most likely uh, disturb your, your, your motivation than it is to enhance it. Um, getting involved on campus, Greek life was a fundamental part of uh, both of our development. And this goes off to saying that I encourage first generation students to find that home away from home and attending those events on campus is gonna really, really help you to determine who is participating, who's showing um, what they really care about, paying attention to philanthropy and the small details will most definitely um, help students out. Be confident, going back to the point that Edson made, be confident, believe in yourself, because once you doubt yourself, that's when things begin to go downhill. So be confident, believe in yourself, and that you got this. Jamie is completely 110% correct. You got this, and if you believe otherwise, you are, you are wrong, and you need to you need to tackle all of your dreams, write them down, um, finding mentorship and guidance. Shout out to Alex Lewis. Alex Lewis has held me time and time again. And I, and I give a lot of the person that I have become to him because if it wasn't for Alex, I wouldn't have uh, been able to become the leader that I am. I wouldn't have been working for Greek University and I wouldn't have met Michael or Edson or the Greek people of Greek University. Um, and these people are genuinely invested in your growth and development. Alex never asks anything from me, but for me to be the best version of myself. And um, that, I thoroughly thank you for that, Alex. You, you have always been wonderful, buddy. Um, <laughs> keep in a calendar and be persistent with yourself. Don't be too hard on yourself, but keep in a calendar and this will definitely help you hold yourself accountable. Um, as well as a journal, you know, have a journal that you can write things down on and unleash and just, it helps you to build a relationship with yourself and a relationship with yourself is by far the most important relationship you will ever have to build on. And that's it. Um, any tips or tricks, follow me on social media. I left my information on the links below. Um, and I'll be more than happy to help anybody that is interested. Excellent. Victor is showing you in real time how important it is to have a mentor. He's showing you that in real time. Uh, so Edson, what's the best way for people to contact you for more information? Where can they reach you? Yeah, so I'm going to post my information um, in the link that uh, Victor posted, you know, so that when you guys go on there, you can have it. But I'll put my social media handles, um, just in case y'all want it now. My Instagram is BigEd1906. Um, and then you can find me on Facebook. And my email is um, my first time first name, that last name, so edson.oneal at gmail.com. And I'm really going to implore you guys, like, um, I, I love to connect and I love to build relationships, so please use my re- my information. 
I'm imploring you all, like, I really want to help. I really want to assist in any way that I can do that. Um, serve as guidance, give advice, or maybe just be a, a ear to listen. Maybe you're going through, you had a difficult day and you went through a different situation and you just need to kind of air things off. Hey, I'm more than happy to do that for you all. I, we all need that, you know? So um, please utilize my information. Um, you know, also you can find my information on the Greek U webpage. Um, so you can go there um, and you can utilize and find my information there. Um, but yeah, this was great. Um, thank you, Jamie, for all the feedback and information you've given. Um, Alex, you see, it seems you do an amazing job, Akeem. So keep up the good work, sir, and be from the Caribbean. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> and to everyone else, thank you so much for uh, being here, um, giving your feedback and information. And we hope that this was, this was very helpful. And we hope that you guys can definitely take a lot from this and think about your institutions um, to kind of help grow the Greek community, to grow your institution, um, and to grow your community. That's great. Yeah. And you can uh, check out Edson's bio and some of his presentations on campuses all across the country at uh, the URL. It's greekuniversity.org slash Edson, E-D-S-O-N. Victor, what about you? Uh, what's the best way to connect with you uh, if people want to reach you right now? So um, on Instagram, my handle is underscore Victor B. That's uh, the letter B E E. So like like a like a B. Uh, um, <laughs> underscore Victor B. And then I also have a website. Um, it's V I B E N L I C E. So Vic V I Ben dot dot com slash Victorville. Um, or you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn dot com slash dash i n dash victor i ben lease um and uh you can you can follow me on all of those um i check them actively and i'll be more than happy to interact uh, give a listening ear advice mentorship guidance whatever is needed of me i'll be more than happy to help thank you so much for the opportunity and this was a wonderful town hall i really i've been preparing for this so much and it really all went so well so Thank you so much. <laughs> That's great. Victor Benlis, you did fantastic. Edson O'Neill, you are the man. Uh, I love working with you guys. You know that already. I tell you all the time how much uh, you mean to me both. And so thank you for the work that you're doing. It's been very helpful for students all across the country today. We'll share this video. Please share it out uh, if you found this was helpful for you. And we'll see you on another episode here of uh, our town halls and fraternity foodie. Thanks so much for being here today. And we'll see you soon. Take care. Have a great day.